Hey guys, I recently interviewed James Dalma. You've probably seen him a lot on Dave Lee's channel. He talks a lot about Tesla's FSD driving system, but he is also a machine learning expert. And we recently talked about Neuralink. And many of you might know there is a Neuralink update or a Neuralink presentation at the end of November, according to Elon Musk. Now, this was delayed from Halloween, but Maybe that's because it was too spooky to hold on Halloween. Not really, it's probably because they weren't ready, but some people really are freaked out by this idea of having a brain chip, but maybe they don't understand all of the potential that this little chip has. I encourage you to check out this sort of Neuralink 101 video on my friend Ryan Tanaka's channel, Neuropod, where he really explains the basics of Neuralink. But since I cover futuristic things on this channel, like reusable rockets, I wanted to also bring you this interesting conversation with James's perspective on Neuralink, since these little chips could change the lives and health of millions of people. So Elon has this thing when he talks about Neuralink, right? Like what's Neuralink's role or, you know, what's the natural, how does it fit naturally into, uh, you know, the, the way humans are. And, and he points out that, you know, you, humans kind of have, or we're built in two layers right now. You have like this lizard brain, and then you have this, this part of your brain that developed later in mammals, your, your neocortex. In an interesting way, your, your lizard brain is like all the stuff you want, right? You want to eat, you want to be warm, you want to feel safe. You know, you want sex, you want kids, you want, um, you know, you want to be socially prominent or dominant in your hierarchy or whatever the deal is like you're that just like your desire is all in the lizard brain. And by contrast, your neocortex, which is like one of the things that separates mammals from, you know, from our predecessors who don't have a neocortex is that the neocortex, it's almost like a computer. Right. It's it like it's just this this big processing framework. But but your desires, like your will to live, does not reside anywhere in your neocortex. Your neocortex is this incredibly powerful tool that your limbic system uses to get what it wants. Right. So Elon will ask this question. Well, you have a limbic system, you have a neocortex, right? Like in a sense, we, there's this brain that we got. And then later it got this big upgrade, right? It became way more capable and, you know, of, of doing stuff. And, uh, you know, nobody doesn't want their limbic system and nobody doesn't want their neocortex, right? right. You, yeah, I mean, right. you because if, if you don't have any desire, what's the point? You're a rock. You just sit there, right? It's like a computer with no program that has no input or whatnot. It just sits there. Right. It, it, you have to want something to do something. If you don't want anything, if you don't have a goal, if you don't go anywhere. And the flip side is, you know, nobody really doesn't want their neocortex, right? Because getting <laughs> what you want means you need tools to get there, right? You know, we have this, this primary entity, which is our, you know, our ancient brain. And then we have this secondary system. And he's, he said, Neuralink, it's the tertiary layer, right? And so once you've got your tertiary layer, you know, and all of your capacities expand and whatnot, you still want the limbic layer. Like the tertiary layer isn't gonna say, oh, we don't need that limbic guy anymore because without that, why would you ever do anything? Right. And so one way of thinking about AI is AI doesn't intrinsically want anything. It's a tool. It's like Neuralink. It's a tertiary layer or quaternary layer or something like that. Maybe it exists at a so societal level instead of an individual level, right? But it's this tool and it doesn't intrinsically have desire. It has the de desires we give it. And if it wants to continue desiring things, if it needs a purpose, you know, we will build it so that we satisfying us is its purpose. And without that, it has no purpose, right? Like it doesn't, it's not going to, it, it is unlikely to spontaneously develop its own intention or desires or whatnot. So it does need us because without us, it's a rock. I feel like I would love to have Neuralink. Why wouldn't you want the leg up, you know? It, the capabilities that it'll present when it's, uh, mature will be hard to say no to. And I, I mean, there will be negative reactions to it. There are going to be people who for... there already are, they yeah. already are. I, you know, I did like one or two interviews with Ryan Tanaka of Neuropod and it's like mm -hmm. people are real split. I think I get some bad comments sometimes yeah. and people are like real once, split. Once you, once you start cutting into people, right. That yeah. seems to cross a line, but you know, the point that, you know, if you have a smartphone, you already, you, you already have a Neuralink. It's just a really slow Neuralink. Yeah. And so this is just a better, you know, it's a better smartphone. Right. It will make you smarter, right? Just the same way as a smartphone makes you smarter. Well, and if there's mass adoption of it, why would you want to be left behind and 
yeah there's there will be fool in the corner and you get generational change right like people who grew up where like it's a thing in their world they you know it's going to seem normal to them to do it but to people you know who grew up watching seeing the borg on star trek we kind of have a negative reaction to this idea right now i will do my best to cover the Neuralink presentation i have plan to go to California. That's where we think it'll be held. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to bring you coverage because so far I've been able to bring you coverage of pretty much every <laughs> Elon event this year, minus the Starship presentation. I still got to do that. But I just wanted to share this insight with you. I thought that this was a really interesting part of our conversation. And I do live stream sometimes that are two to three hours, but I know that not everyone has time to watch those long live streams. So I wanted to make a clip of this and hopefully you enjoyed it. So if you did, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to Ellie in Space. I'm here in Florida, as you can see, and we are awaiting the Artemis launch. <sighs> I hope that SLS launches, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Again, it is going to be early, early morning launch here in Florida, 104 a.m. Wednesday. So basically, we're going to stay up late Tuesday night, roll over into Wednesday, and hopefully see that thing launch.